not really sure that this is a good thing to do or not, but we're thinking of selling our boat. Now if you're a regular to our channel, you will know all about Seahorse, but just in case you're new or haven't been paying attention, let's run through the things that you might want to know if you were interested in buying her. We bought her at the start of 2016 and have loved every minute. Basically, she was in good condition with a fantastic specification, but she did need some work doing to her. We did most of this over the winter of 2016 and 2017 and we detailed all the stuff we did in a series of winter vlogs. But in brief, we fixed the problem with the front bulkhead, we varnished everything inside and out, we replaced all the seacocks, new upholstery throughout, new headlining boards throughout, soundproofed the engine, replaced all the standing rigging, serviced and replaced where required all the running rigging, and we bought and fitted a new Rockner anchor, chain and road. And that didn't include all the normal winter maintenance stuff that we do every year, like fairing the bottom of the hull and re anti fouling, cleaning and polishing the top sides, winterising, servicing, and then recommissioning the engine. Also worthy of note is that in 2009 she underwent a complete refit where she had her keel professionally removed, fared, and refitted, plus all the undersides sanded and epoxy sealed prior to finishing, plus a set of four top quality Harkin winches and adjustable jib tracks were added to the decks. If you want to know more about Hansa 291s, then check out the film we made a while ago, walking you through the boat. There'll be a link somewhere on the screen here. But in the meantime, let's run through Seahorse's specification and the things that make her special. We'll start with the sails. She comes with an extensive sail wardrobe, which includes a set of North Carbon 3DL sails that we only ever bring out for the big races each year and the previous owner only did a single race season with them. So they are still in great condition, just a few rusty cringles as normal on carbon sails. There is also a full set of modern laminate sails from Sanders, which are the sails you see in most of the films. These include a number one, which is in excellent condition, a number three, which to be honest is well used as it's our go-to sail for most occasions because it's so nice to sail with but it still sets and flies nicely. And the main, which is getting older, but has had no repairs, and again, still sets to a good shape. One of the benefits of modern laminate sails is they don't blow out like Dacron sails do, so they maintain their performance for a long time. There are also two spinnakers, which are both in pretty good condition, and a cruising Sanders Dacron number three, which we use when we go on holiday, or all the odds and ends. It's actually a really nice sail, and Seahorse will sail almost as well to windward with just that one Dacron number three jib up and no main as she does with all the racing sails on. Maybe not as quick, but she holds a line and you can sail on all points well with it. There is also a storm head sail and a tri sail in the loft somewhere. So if you're serious about your offshore racing, you'll want these, but we've never taken them out of the bag. And as far as I know, they're still as good as new. Next, let's talk about the electrics. To start with, she has had all the electrics improved from standard with a new fuse panel fitted and a Victron battery management system that looks after two large house batteries as well as the engine battery. There are a B&G speed, wind, depth and temperature sensors plus separate GPS antenna and electronic compass. There's a VHF radio and a full AIS transponder set up so other ships can see you as well as you can see them and this has a main aerial on top of the mast like normal but also a backup area on the push pit for emergencies. These sensors all link into a common network like normal and can be seen through a couple of Triton color multifunction displays and a Zeus 2 chart plotter. She also has the GoFree wireless network interface so you can get all this yacht information on your phone or tablet if required. Plus, she has an excellent B&G Triton below decks auto helm which can easily be switched on and off via keypad on each side of the companionway. You should note this isn't your normal cruiser setup and Seahorse can quite literally sail herself on any point of sail, often better than I can when I take the tiller. So as you can tell, Seahorse is not your normal Hansa 291, or to be honest, your normal 29 foot cruising boat, and we won't be letting her go cheaply, so who should be interested? Firstly, you have to actually enjoy your sailing. If you're the sort of yachtsman that doesn't sail upwind, or who never adjusts the trim of your sails, 
or who puts the engine on the moment things get tricky, then you'll probably find there are cheaper and more appropriate boats out there to look at. But if you want a true cruiser racer, a boat that you can race competitively one week, be it single-handed or with a full crew, and yet is still comfortable enough to take the family out cruising on, then you won't find anything that does all this as well as Seahorse does with this level of fit out and for this amount of money. So, if you are seriously interested, then please get in touch. We will be taking her out of the water on the 23rd of November to be laid up for the winter, as we always do, so there is not much time left if you'd like a test sail. I'm sure if you look on YouTube somewhere, you'll find our email address.